Okay, so welcome to tonight's SOAS Centre of Taiwan uh, Studies uh, lecture. Um, uh, to, in a theory tonight, is the last session in our contemporary uh, Taiwan Indigenous Studies lecture series that we've been running over the last uh, two years. Uh, so it's, in a way, it's a, it's a uh, uh, sad moment, but uh, uh, we are working to um, uh, continue this series over the next uh, few months, so there will be more. Uh, including the, our uh, documentary on army hip hop coming up, and we are starting to um, um, plan. A th I think we'll have at least two more um, events this term, and we will have more into uh, into term three on this theme of Taiwan's indigenous uh, peoples. Um, for those of you that, that missed uh, last night's uh, remarkable uh, talk, last night's uh, in last night's talk, Tintafan gave us a basically an overview of key trends um, of uh, indigenous literature over the last uh, few decades. Um, and she's going to build on that uh, talk um, uh, tonight. Uh, Chen Defan, um did her PhD in Chinese at National Zhengzhou University um, and now works in the, uh, the Taiwan Literature uh, Institute or Department? Department uh, at National uh, Tsinghua uh, University. Um, and hopefully tonight we'll have a little bit, we, we kind of rushed the Q&A a little bit uh, last night, but um, uh, hopefully we'll have a little bit more time um, uh, for, for uh, Q&A. Uh, so let's give Professor Chen another big um, welcome to SOAS. Okay. Um, thank you, all of you, come here in a beautiful Friday night. <laughs> you know, uh, when I walk around the uh, street, I see a lot of people relax in a Friday night. So I really appreciate all of you come here. And uh, I hope uh, after, uh, our, after my talk, we have a lot of time to discuss this topic. Um, maybe this way will let the night more beautiful. <laughs> Okay, my um, this, uh, this is my second talk about about Taiwan indigenous literature. Today I want to uh, talk about this topic. The topic is three have a uh, three keywords: uh, literature, native resurgence, and uh, Aboriginal knowledge. We call it uh, epistemology. So uh, my presentation is divided two parts. One is to talk about the relationship of the three keywords. And the, the other, I will share four stories to respond to this topic. So um, um, this is my uh, presentation. And um, if if I want to talk about indigenous literature as a way of uh, for future making, uh, we talk about uh, the four point of view. Yesterday, uh, we talk about the change of writing style, and uh, the uh, literature are transformed into culture and creativity industrial. So we talk about this topic. This uh, this topic. It focuses on the change, the change way, the style, and uh, from realistic to magical realism. So the uh, yesterday we talked about this topic. I want to focus on the indigenous writer want to uh, continue the story. So they use different ways to tell the story and uh, uh, attract people's attention. So I think uh, this is the way. They want to attract all of you to be a reader. So they use popular, uh, pop, uh, pa popular ways or uh, uh, transformed into movies com, um, uh, and uh, some products, product. So, um, but today I want to focus on another part of this, uh, the future of making. The part is, I think some writers uh, redefine the cultural identity and uh, to think contested worldview in their literature. 
Maybe their ideal reader is Lenzhou, is the tribal people. So I think uh, their uh, their ideal reader is different. One maybe is maybe all of us, included um, Han people and um, their tribe. But the other, and uh, we will talk about this, maybe this uh, literature, their ideal <coughs> reader is tribal people. So um, I would like to show uh, when the when literature focus on cultural identity and uh, focus on the world of view. Maybe this is uh, they they talk about the topic of native resource by literature. What is native resource? Uh, resource. I think I have uh, uh, some uh, ideas from James Clifford. James Clifford is an ethnologist. And he, op uh, he is a um, uh, surprise book. The book is Returns Become Indigenous in the 21st Century. I think the, the main thing of the book is talk about the indigenous people can't disappear and the culture of indigenous people don't, uh, didn't, uh, will not uh, vanish because they obtain materials from deeply rooted and uh, adaptable tradition. So to deal with this um, rooted and adaptable tradition, they can force the global uh, they can they can deal with the force of globalization and the capitalism. So in in uh, this book uh, viewpoint. Uh, the the Jane Clifford insist maybe if indigenous people want to have a good future, they have to come back to find uh, their tradition. But I think um, the Jane Clifford says if the indigenous people come back to find the tradition, but the tradition is not capital uh, is not continuously and uh, uh, don't change tradition. The tradition is a process uh, about engagement, about performance, and the translation. So according to him, native resurgence is a continuous process involve these uh, three uh, tragedy. So with this tragedy, as an ethnic identity is not about returning to an essential and a continuous tradition, but about a process of forming a new unity. In this book, I think uh, when he talk about native resurgence, he uh, suggests indigenous people come back to find a tradition, but the tradition is a process is a tragedy to find a new way to form a new unity. So, by the way, uh, indigenous people will find a new way to, uh, to live in a modern life. If we uh, take this uh, native resurgence, we can um, talk about the tradition and uh, epistemology in that way. I will use uh, the example. This example is from uh, Arcid Island, Dao people. You see the pictures, the man uh, to dry the fish. For, the, for, uh, for these peoples, a man uh, work every day, and he, uh, fish is the main work for a man every day. But when they have the a uh, flying fish festival. The men have to do a lot of things, like to make a boat, to fish, to dry the fish, and uh, share this food. And uh, have, and uh, he have to tell some stories uh, to their families about this ceremony. So this is a kind of hostetic uh, life in the Tao peoples. And um, 
but you see another picture. The picture is 1950. Tao people have their religious conversion. Uh, so uh, at the first, at the start of this festival, Tao people will uh, blessing in traditional way, and then they will give a blessing from pastor. So I use this flying fish festival to talk about the tradition and uh, indigenous people's knowledge. I want to uh, I want to uh, share the indigenous knowledge. Indigenous knowledge, you know, uh, he this knowledge is practiced every day. Like I say, men uh, fish every day. This is their culture, and uh, practice in a holistic way, like flying fish festival, is a set of customs to, uh, to have this ceremony, and uh, very interesting. Uh, indigenous knowledge not mean the tradition, culture, not mean local culture, because we can identify what is local culture. You see the uh, the Christian religion come to the tribe. Their traditional culture was uh, was mixed by Christian. So I think indigenous knowledge reveal the kind of cross culture characteristic. So, uh, what can we identify the um, Aboriginal knowledge? I think it is very interesting because. Uh, we have uh, to choose different way to describe it, and um, uh, maybe every people, every tribe have a mix, two or three cultures together, and uh, then this is their tradition, and that is their indigenous knowledge. So, this is a special way I want to talk the tradition and uh, Aboriginal knowledge. By the way, I want to re uh, talk about the relationship, the indigenous literature and uh, indigenous knowledge. If, if we uh, know the indigenous knowledge have a, is a process by tradition, uh, local culture, and mix some cultures from others, by the way, we can uh, focus on three parts of indigenous people and uh, their knowledge. One is the primary world. They also, the, uh, the writer returned to their tribe and start to record family stories. The author organized and summarized the knowledge based on the, the based on life experience and uh, they describe in new narration. So, the first, we can see some stories. The story uh, share, uh, share a set of customs. This is uh, the first part. And uh, two, as indigenous people live in the tribe culture and um, mainstream culture at the same time, their knowledge should have a uh, the property of being cross culture, so indigenous writer face changing culture and their identities. They have an opportunity to redefine the corporate conception of indigenism. So um, the second part um, is like yesterday I mentioned. Maybe some writers use magical realism to to tell story because they think their indigenism have a, is a mix the uh, coastal modernism. So this is the mixed result. Uh, so I use the diverse cultures to describe the second level of indigenous knowledge. And the third, for the writing fields, um, we talked about yesterday, uh, for indigenous people, writing is make a new world. 
They are not passive responders for astral environment. They, by writing, they, they could make a new world. By this way, they would make social space to define themselves. So it's full of energy and active. And when we uh, see the relationship about uh, literature field and uh, indigenous knowledge, maybe we can think interesting uh, way. Some writers write a story, and the story is very special for, for all of us. So when we see this book, we, <coughs> we clearly identify this is indigenous literature. So when we see this book, maybe some writers and some, book, some uh, stories have the cultural, social, and symbol uh, symbolic capital. They, this capital would uh, support some relevance on native resurgence. This is three parts I want to share uh, Aboriginal uh, knowledge included the 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 prime the primary world, diverse cultures and the writing field. And and I uh, by uh, by this process and by this talking, we I want to sh uh, focus on indigenous indigenous literature, uh, show the indigenous knowledge. But sometimes we have to notice the this knowledge, this uh, indigenous knowledge also uh, make a new way to tell the story. Sometimes I, we can see some story with the song, with some um, interesting style from the legends, from uh, the stories. So if we we by the way we can see the literature shows represent the indigenous knowledge, but sometimes we find is um, uh, influence on each other. We can see some words use special way from oral uh, oral folklore or oral literature. So this is um, the uh, influence by each other. And uh, I want to share some story about this to respond the indigenous knowledge. The story of time. <laughs> the story of time till uh, a boy grow up. This story focus on it. The writer used this style to tell a boy from his birth and from his teenager to get in marriage and death. A whole, a, a, a whole of life, a man would have a, a lot of customs and a ceremony in, in one's life. So the right used this style to tell the story of growing, to tell a story of time, to represent all of customs in, uh, in, the, in a life. So, a set of customs would be seen in a story. We can see a lot of customs because this is the main thing in the story. And uh, uh, we read this story, we can we not only understand this ceremony, but also feel the emotion during the ceremony. So I think if uh, the writer use the uh, use this way, he want to share uh, a man from the birth to the death, and uh, maybe 50 or 60 years, there are a lot of ceremony on, on life. In this way, two interesting points we can recognize. One, how can the collective heritage be personalized? of the purpose of literary, literary writing. You know, this is collective heritage. But for a writer, 
he had to find a new narration to tell the story, even the story is full of custom and ceremony. So uh, we, we, may, we may focus on be personalized because this is the ambition for the writer. And the second, how can we give mountain meanings to the myth systems and the myth thinking? This, this is very interesting. You know, in mountain life, uh, we say the myth, the, the myth is from ancestor, it's old. But if we read this story, we have to find new meaning about this. So when we see this story, uh, readers, uh, every reader read the story. Uh, he can, uh, he understand the ceremony, ceremony, and maybe he would find new meanings to explain this custom. Although maybe he is he is Han people, and he is not a Parisian. So this is the story of time, and uh, this topic is fantastic, uh, is charming <laughs> because everyone have this have the same uh, situation about the birth and the death. The second, I think you are not um, you are familiar with this. The second story is about urban witch. Yesterday we talked about witch. But today I focus on the urban, because uh, in Taiwan, indigenous people live in city. All of them live in the city. So if their work, uh, the literature always uh, describe they uh, live in the tribe or they want to they live in a traditional way, but in fact they are live in the city. So the Indigenous writer said, uh, use this story to share something to represent indigenous people live in uh, cultural and the city culture. So uh, the story happened in the city and uh, to tell a difficult journey from a girl, this girl have to face their uh, to have to face the exam. But he be recalled to be a witch. I think this story is very interesting because the city is, for indigenous people is uh, is bad, especially in the uh, indigenous uh, movement. Uh, they think the city is evil because people have to uh, forgive a lot of things to earn their living in the city. So the city is a bad meaning, but in this story, he transformed this situation. He, uh, he, uh, the writer described the girl uh, uh, live in the city and use MP3, use CD to study the tradition, like songs, like uh, ceremony, because she have uh, no chance to live in a tribe. She live in the city, but use mountain ways to learn the tradition. So I think it, this is very interesting because this story shows the city become the place where the indigenous people could assess resources and interpret their tradition. They live in the city and uh, find a new way to come back uh, to catch the tradition. So the city have a chance for the meetings. The city support a lot of chance, a lot of opportunity for them. And uh, uh, the story of urban, which support um, and uh, um, have a, maybe let me to think about which name we should to say, because in the city, we have a lot of choice to be all kinds of people. Maybe the, uh, the people live in the city, like, uh, like we, like us. We, are, we have a different identity at the same time. Have, have a, uh, a lot of a chance to be the person you want to be. So 
uh, the writer change the image of the city uh, to uh, opposite the, the tribe. You know, uh, the, uh, the main thing in indigenous literature, all people, all tribe people, all indigenous want to uh, go back home. The home is tribe. But now we have to rethink this topic. They live in the city and find a new way to make a new home in the city. So remember the James Clifford, his topic of, uh, the topic of book is returns as. So the returns, it means um, the indigenous people come back, come back to the tribe, but they have not stay in the tribe. They have to come to the city or come to another place. And uh, then they, they also you come back to the home, come back to the tribe. This is returns, the meaning of returns. So by uh, migrations, uh, the step, uh, the trace for the indigenous people will be complicated. And this way will make them uh, to, to ensure which then should we say. So this is about the story of urban. Another interesting story is about God. Um, this story always uh, end, end with God, <laughs> like this story. This story is um, about a girl. The girl, he uh, is, he is uh, he, he had a bad fortune, bad, uh, bad fortune in, in his life. But the story ended with God. She carried this sense of guilt until he re-understand what was the best word by God. So I think this story is very interesting. Like we say the story of urban. Indigenous people live in the urban, live live in the city now, and uh, indigenous people are Christian, most of them are Christian now. So you may argue, uh, what is their tradition? Because we also think the tradition is his uh, original culture, tribe culture, but the Christian uh, uh, religion uh, change a lot, change this way. Like we, uh, we talk about the frying fish festival. They, the, start of this uh, the start of this festival, they use the Christian ceremony to bless him. So uh, this story of God, uh, the writer want to have a tension between the tribal culture and the Christian region. By the way, um, the story also showed a special topic of this. I remember Dafi uh, yesterday says um, a lot of scholars talk about the issue of indigenous with state struggle and um, um, don't know how to do. <laughs> so we, we, we talk uh, in the first stage, uh, there are a lot of sad stories about this because it's true and uh, uh, indigenous people have to find a new way to live in a modern world. But this story uh, with God are special because the story, although the, sto the start of story are, are say, is said, by the end, the, uh, the character will be reversed when they meet the God. So, I think it is very interesting, you know, uh, most of them are Christian and uh, the Christian religion is their daily life, even maybe uh, mixed with the tradition. So this story um, uh, con uh, will have a new topic of indigenous people literature, like rebirth. I think is it is very uh, surprise to me because uh, rebirth is not uh, the traditional 
uh, we know the folk uh, local cultures thinking rebirth is from Christian so when the story about God and have this special issue of rebirth um, maybe this is the we, we talk about the uh, Aboriginal knowledge with diverse culture this is the symbol of the diverse culture so uh, we see the story of God and uh, we also see the story of rainbow I think this is another interesting issue because um, uh, the, the rainbow issue is famous and popular in Taiwan we, uh, we have a lot of people to join this activity to uh, claim the rights claim the human rights and, for, and in, the, uh, uh, in this field the story about the rainbow about the gender issue there uh, for them uh, for indigenous people if, if uh, indigenous, uh, indigenous guy will uh, have a lot of conflict with a lot of uh, situations like mainstream society, like uh, part, uh, like uh, the father society, but it is very surprise because indigenous um, LGBT will have a uh, have a to struggle with Christian religion because. In their tribe, most of them are Christian. So, uh, the uh, although some Christian uh, Christian have uh, the open mind, but most of them have uh, to uh, have uh, the deep, uh, have uh, to have uh, this attitude to against LGBT. So, indigenous people, if if uh, if they are a guy, they will face a lot of challenge in Taiwan especially in Christian region. So I use this olive, this is movie, but uh, some literature have uh, this, uh, the, same, uh, the same character to, to say the, the story of Rainbow. It will show the indigenous ethnic group and the gay uh, mix, and uh, this, uh, this identity will let them uh, have a lot of change, have a lot of challenge in mountain life. So I share this, uh, these stories, four stories, like story of time, story of God, story of rainbow, and story of city. I think this is truly, uh, it, uh, this is the uh, situation for indigenous people in Taiwan now. Most of them live in the city. Most of them are Christian. And uh, they are, maybe I know a lot of friends, they are, you know, they are gay. Uh, they have, the, they, they have uh, this, uh, this choice. So, um, this is the, um, I think this is uh, not, we call the tradition. But now, we have a, to use different way to see this, to see this tradition, because the tradition is process, and uh, now indigenous people have uh, these situations. So, what uh, what can we define the tradition? We can say the tradition with local culture and the city culture, maybe yes, and we we maybe we also have uh, to say the the local culture, the tribe culture, mix Christian culture. And uh, this is the true situation for indigenous people now. So, literature as a way for future making. I want to uh, uh, explain their relationship like this. I think literature show and display their knowledge, their worldview. And uh, the epistemology, 
redefine the cultural identity. This uh, knowledge have um, uh, the double, maybe uh, the cultural tribe, from, uh, from tribe and from uh, mainstream. This is the, I think this is all of the resource for, for indigenous people to think, to, re, uh, to build their knowledge. And by this, the knowledge will define the cultural identity. And the cultural identity will support native resurgence. I think this, uh, their relation is about this. So this is the uh, this is the main thing I talk. The literature will make a uh, a way for native resurgence because this literature will ensure cultural identity, and uh, there uh, this topic of indigenous literature, their this uh, their ideal reader is for themselves. If they read this, they uh, if they read this work. They will feel, yes, I have a to redefine my cultural identity. Yes, I have a to rethink. Uh, I, I, I would, uh, which name that I would to say in the mountain life. So when the indigenous people redefine their cultural identity, they have the way to adapt in a mountain life. This is, maybe this is our hope. And um, this is the, uh, the, my conclusion. I think uh, in the first stage, we also use different way to say who I am. Like this picture, we uh, use the direct way, direct word, realistic style to, show, to cram the rice. But now, by I uh, describe all kinds of indigenous knowledge. Maybe uh, the question mark is full of meaning because uh, the who am I question mark shows the attitude of choice. If uh, indigenous people have uh, the attitude, have uh, the choice, have a uh, two choice, which name he want to share with others, it means Indigenous people have a free, have a freedom, have their right to choose what life they want to do. So I give the question mark an um, uh, active meaning. I think it shows the returns, the S, returns, the issues of choice. And uh, if uh, the indigenous people ask, who am I? And uh, uh, they followed James Clifford. Uh, the the tragedy, they will choose the uh, suitable way to live better, and uh, they will uh, feel confident to to uh, to choose the way they want to be. So, uh, I think in Taiwan, um, maybe uh, each each man have a to to share their identity. But you know, uh, we have a different identity at the same time, right? Sometimes we are asked, um, you are, who are you? Uh, we, we, at that time, I, we, sh we have a two choose one. But in real situation, maybe each of us have a, a, a lot of choice at the same time. Maybe we have a two or three identity at the same time, right? So if indigenous people, uh, uh, to uh, have uh, the choice to say who am I and uh, choose the uh, one of the identity. I think this is the dream, maybe this is the goal for the indigenous native resurgence. So this is the literature, I use literature to talk about this topic. Um, I think the time is okay and uh, I am very happy to to uh, to talk about this topic with you. Thank you so much. Okay, that was um, um, fascinating. It was an even uh, richer.
uh, picture when it comes to the state of indigenous um, uh, literature. So it really built on your, your talk um, uh, last night. Um, I had a, um, one or two kind of uh, questions I wanted to kind of start off with. Um, uh, one of them was to do with something we touched upon uh, last night in terms of uh, readership. Um, now, many of the, the scholars that have spoken on, on this uh, lecture series, uh, thanks, um, are based in uh, Dongwa University. Mm. Uh, so, something like half of their students uh, are indigenous. Mm. Uh, so, well, in contrast, uh, you're in a, a regular mainstream uh, Taiwanese um, uh, national university. So, probably this, the number of indigenous students is pretty low. Uh, in your class. So I was kind of curious about um, um, how your students back in Taiwan um, uh, feel about the kind of work that you're, uh, you're doing. How do they, do they actually um, uh, enjoy this indigenous, indigenous literature? Mm -hmm. um, so let me just start with that, that question. Okay. Because at one point you talked about um, that many of these writers you're looking at, you feel like they're writing for themselves mm -hmm. rather than for mass audiences. Uh, so, how did how do your students react to this kind of work? Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Davi. I think this is a very interesting question. Uh, it depends on the students, right? <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, I I know the teachers uh, you invite from Donghua, mm -hmm. and uh, in if the reader are indigenous student, uh, maybe they will feel mm, yes the. Um, the book, uh, the uh, the writer describe the wrong culture sometimes. Yes, because they use the different way to to read the story. They will check what is true and what is maybe a real situation. But for me or for all my students, we are not indigenous people, and uh, we are uh, uh, we are attracted by these customs, the storytelling and um, uh, the, the viewpoint from them. Because, uh, like we, we talk the story of time, you know my, my students are very interested in this story because they, this is different way between us, right? And um, they, uh, the, in the story, uh, when, the, when the baby uh, birth, they, uh, uh, when the people dance, a lot of ceremony to do this. But this is is very special for, for for us. So my students are interested to read this special story. It different between us. I think this is um this question is very interesting because it uh it means uh some writers write this topic, um become their cultural capital, because uh, um when. When the book, uh, when the story want to be discussed, maybe they have a two focus <laughs> on this, and uh, uh, we have a, we will buy the book and talk about this topic. The writer and the story have the cultural capital, and I, I think for different reader, uh, have a different feel feel <laughs> feeling about this story, so. Uh, my students like this story, but some of them uh, didn't satisfy uh, their, this, this kind of story because the story with uh, all of the, uh, most of the story use the realistic style. And uh, my students, especially for young students, they like to read magical realism or read some fantasy story. And they want to, uh, uh, they want to get a uh, happy mind when they read the story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes, so uh, I think it depends on the students. And um, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe um, in in all of your experience, um, when you see the the suffer story, it will let you think a lot. And um, we, uh, when we read a happy story, we will think a lot too. Mm -hmm. So I think this, uh, the story, if the story uh, are talked or are, are discussed a lot, maybe 
this is the uh, this is the writer's real real hope. Okay. Okay. So let's open to questions. Yeah, uh, Helly. Yes. Um. Uh, oh. I I really appreciate your framework. I, I think it's um very il very um illustrative of the certain dynamics involved. And I want to uh, suggest that you in your own presentation have illustrated another aspect of that in the way that you use English, which I find both unconventional and also beautiful. Oh. The way in which you um, pronounce words would immediately confront a certain kind of um, top-down structure within languages. So in England we will be taught how to pronounce mm. the language, yes. which is other than the way in which it can be pronounced, because the English language, like all languages, like mm. the Chinese languages, can be pronounced in a number of ways. Mm. And often the case when you would use a word like uh, bestowed, mm. the way you pronounce it would force us to confront what it actually means and how it has been put together. Okay. And I think that cuts in very well with this idea of the multipolarity of identity in terms of how we come to understand it. Because often the case, identity is always presented as a static medium. Yeah. But as you suggest, it's one which, if it's to be properly embedded, has to be an enlightened medium. It has to be one which is based around self-reflection. And I guess in indigenous communities, like in minority communities, one of the real problems has been the sense in which existing practices are often presented as being the actual identity formation of that particular group mm -hmm. without any proper reflection on how they come to be. And I think this is part of the necessary progress that we need to make in liberation struggles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, um, I agree with you. Uh, sometimes when we talk about the, to the topic of identity, it is very uh, difficult to, to talk because uh, we also think indigenous people have their identity. Um, maybe, uh, but I argue if if uh, some situation the uh, indigenous people, black like teenagers, they don't want to talk the topic of identity. Yeah, because they they uh, they think the identity is so politic, and um, uh, they live they live in the mountain society. And sometimes they they will share their identity, but sometimes they don't. They want to they want to uh, live in uh, in in the same way and not and not to be uh, identified in different situation and identified in different ways. So, um, I uh, your uh, comment that uh, had. Let me think an uh, interesting experience. Um, some indigenous writer write the customs, write traditions to make their clear identity. But some of them don't like to do this. They write the novel in common way. So when we when we read this novel, we can identify which one write this story and we see oh this is indigenous writer so i think this is another tragedy because um, tragedy if, or strategy strategy <laughs> yes sorry yeah. strategy and uh, uh a tragedy as well <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah so i think it is very interesting because uh we also to uh want to uh, c uh clear the identity but some of them don't do this because um, for them, maybe in, in the my hope, we, all, we, we want to be the same with others and uh, have the equal right, have an equal 
uh, viewpoint. Yeah. But in, um, I remember last night you talked about your definition of what is indigenous literature, and your your kind of key defining point is uh, it's written by indigenous writers. Yes. But if there's no um, indigenous connection in the content, mm. does that still classif ca uh, does that still pass your test? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Okay. You know, like English literature, you wouldn't say that that what's the content. You won't force mm. the writer to say a particular kind of thing. You have to talk about English afternoon tea mm. to be English. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think it's but I, essentialistic. But actually, I think David does have a point there because um, I know. You see, in the in the English literature case, often the case what's happened in England is English literature exists as English literature in the way that you describe. But then, when a minority group mm. also engages in it, then they're expected to have their minority form of literature. But at the same time, you can't say, so they can't do it. Of course. So no. that, that's exactly, I don't think it should be categorized as tragedy. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, go ahead. Good, good. So, okay, thank you very much. Um, because this is an uh, uh, extension of uh, yesterday's talk, so uh, can I combine the both uh, talks and, and and ask some questions. First of all, um, we did touch upon before the talk, did deny that um, although the fundamental conclusion I can tell is this kind of uh, the journey to search for who am I uh, leads to this kind of future building of their own identity in a, a more constructive and also quite positive way. But in this journey, I only see men's voice. And this is a very one-dimensional uh, future building. <laughs> so this, if this is the case, yeah. where's women's voice? And I, I was, you did mention one particular one. And as a mother, and as a grandmother, not as a woman. So uh, can you elaborate a little bit what has been done or or hasn't been done that's yeah, I'll, I'll ask another question for that we have another time okay. yeah um, thank you for your question I think this is an important question um, yes um, I think uh, to uh, ensure cultural identity is one way for for indigenous people uh, to uh, to be a native, uh, to find the native soldiers, uh, resurgence, and um, a spe But we uh, yesterday and today we we heard a lot of story from men, right? And um, sometimes in 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 real situations, um, uh, people uh, writers. Um, uh, not men, um, the writers. <laughs> Maybe we can think is uh, yesterday we talked we talked about our uh, Nicolas Aou. Although he write his uh, her mother and grandmother, and uh, his families are um, are invoked by his marriage. Even though, I I think for uh, for women, uh, if uh, if um, it's, it is very difficult to. Uh, uh, to give up their identity of indigenous, because uh, I I have uh, asked Ah Wu, uh, because uh, his family is is clear, but he said even though he always he talk, always said he uh, she is a uh, aborigines and then she is a woman, yeah. So I ask I argued. Maybe you can do. You are woman, and then indigenous. He said. She said no. Yeah. But how about men? They never thought about their. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I. This is why I told the story of gender because it the same situation for LGBT, because um in the Taiwan LGBT is um important issue. Sometimes, uh, the the indigenous people want to uh, want to uh, support this 
this social movement. But when they come back to their tribe, uh, they, they can't uh, really tell their story because first they are indigenous and then they are LGBT. So um, I think this is uh, interesting. But, okay. but uh, when they are first indigenous, does that mean that in a sense by being indigenous within their local community, also being LGBT would come to be something else. So, of course, you can be any number of things as one identity, but if in the first identity those who are part of it would then say, oh, but then if you're indigenous, you can't be LGBT. <laughs> so is that, is that what you mean? Yes, yes, yeah. But you know, uh, sometimes I, I think the culture of LGBT or the, the feminist is very different from the indigenous culture. Uh, a lot of tribe is, uh, is father society and uh, the woman didn't do any judgment in the family. Uh, most of, or most of them do also um, do this. So sometimes they, they want to talk about something in their works. And um, yeah, we, we hope in the future maybe they will be <laughs> they will strengthen their families in their in their literature. And it's uh, like B you wanted to challenge her on that. No What is tradition? Is bad tradition but you know, is it worth keeping? So uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> Can we ask questions? I'm just, I, I don't know if this is a question or if I'm just adding to the confusion. But um, <laughs> does the problem good. of identity actually come from the intersectionality of it, where you have to choose between being from a certain um, ethnic identity and also then being a woman? And then when you're already in a minority group, it's harder to sort of let yourself choose that individual perspective as compared to the society, which is anyway such a small part of a bigger capitalistic, wonderful picture. So it's but of course, it's context, isn't it? In a certain context, it's important to be in indigenous. Yeah. But in other contexts, it's m more important to be a woman. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's necessarily only one or the other, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's true, that's true. And, and it depends on... Uh, the situation the, the the woman are yes like now Bi Yu is a teacher and then when he come back home maybe I'm still <laughs> <laughs> yes but I know uh, I, I think for your uh, same for your questions uh, uh, I think um, each one have a different identity to choose and uh, or be chosen Yes, yes. Well, that's different, isn't it? No. But, but <laughs> well, but, but the, point, the point is that uh, within a minority grouping of whatever kind, the identity only comes to be recognized when other people tell you about it. Because some black boys will say they only found out they were black when everyone noticed it. Otherwise, no, they when you they already like encounter else. difference. Yes, I think, I thought he wrong. <laughs> I don't believe it. You want me to? to because you're usually fighting for the mic. <laughs> we Would you like of, to? Um, I'll try. We did kind of uh, rush you a little bit. Um, last uh, time. Yes, especially yeah, for today's, language. Today's focus is a little bit different. Um, yes. So I don't know if I can phrase the question, but uh, of course today's talk was also very interesting. Um, that there, there's two things that um, uh, occupy my mind. Um, one is. Um, the title, you know, uh, literature as, as, as future building, which certainly resonates with me. Um, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the history of, of the struggle oh, for right. Irish independence, it's totally bound up with literature. Same in Scotland, uh, the same in Finland, which only became independent in 1780. Um, and a lot of that literature was mm -hmm. seeking, I mean, not just those three countries, but it's quite a, a European wide. A uh, phenom phenomenon, actually, a phenomenon, actually, um, was going back to the past, and, and very often going back to the pre-Christian past, because uh, many people <laughs> kind of feel that uh, Christianity has 
has been more harmful than, than good uh, for, for, for us Europeans. Um, and, a lot of, and, and, and incidentally, a lot of the great uh, uh, European works of art, I'm thinking of Wagner, I'm thinking of a lot of Picasso, um, they actually were created in, in outright uh, defiance and opposition uh, towards uh, Christianity. So, um, I'm a little bit concerned because, uh, you know, um, in, in indigenous <laughs> communities embracing uh, monotheist religion, um, it's a bit like turkeys voting for Christmas, you know. Um, if I, sounds a bit mixed up, doesn't it? Okay, um, and, and, but, but I think it's a very, a very important idea that the literature helps uh, people to find a place and, and, and to, to, to proclaim their identity and not have it proclaimed for them by other people from somewhere else. Um, uh, and, and, um, and, 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 and the other thing was... Um, so what's the question? Well, I said I'm, I'm commenta commentating. Oh, sorry. And, and the other thing, but the thing I'm, I'm struggling for... Um, Well, literature in the future, what, and what was the other thing? That was one of the major... That was Christianity, yes, yeah, so that's two things. That's two things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, um, uh, because Christianity, you know, you take... I mean, the, Shao, a lot of the traditional religions in, 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 in Taiwan are shamanistic. Traditional religion in Korea is shamanistic. And before Christianity, all over Europe, there were various forms of shamanism. And indeed... Uh, People are not aware of how persistent a lot of these beliefs have been, and, and uh, you know, take fire festivals, which you have in Scotland. We were down to one. You know, Christianity almost stamped it out. We were down to one particular festival, but during the later 20th century, when the, the, the grip, the hold that uh, Christianity has had on, on, on society, has relaxed. Of course, it's allowed space for for the celebration of some of these beliefs. Not necessarily the, the going back to the beliefs, but the, the celebration of some of these beliefs to, to, to re, uh, research, to come back, you yeah. um, know. Sorry. I, um, did you want to respond, or could I um, uh, follow up with something related to Ivan's point? Um, I want to okay. re, re, reply with you. Thank you for your comment. I think you, you mentioned an important uh, phenomenon is Christian this region is about the indigenous people. Uh, like feminist, <laughs> I think this issue is uh, also important to discuss. Uh, in Taiwan, um, most, of, you know, most of indigenous people are, are Christian. And uh, they they uh, also have the the, the uh, Christmas day, and uh, they uh, but something very interesting. Um, they they sing the song with their mother tongue. Even the uh, the music is from the west, but they the language is is mother tongue. So it is the mixed um, situation in the tribe. So um, I think this is a good example to uh, to uh, focus on the mixed culture because um, uh, tr uh, indigenous people don't uh, don't give up their mother tongue, don't give up their uh, lo uh, local tradition, but they are Christian. They have the uh, ceremony to celebrate, so they uh, they use the. Uh, the suitable way uh, to to be an uh, indigenous Christian. <laughs> yes. So I argue if um, maybe uh, the first they are indigenous or the first they are Christian. You know, sometimes the in the theme, uh, in the uh, the topic we talk about Digalang uh, Lao first identity is uh, indigenous people, and then he is a woman. But I argue, uh, maybe the first, <laughs> the first identity is indigenous or Christian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Can I, can I just you want respond directly on that? Yeah. Yeah, um, the latest. Michael. Of course, I'm not. I'm not suggesting that that, that um, influences from other cultures is a bad thing. Culture is is, is a living thing, and, yeah. and it does indeed come from Latin, the same root as viticulture agriculture and so yeah. on is something that, that we make ourselves. Um, 
just what concerns me is, is when one dominating um, a form um, absorbs another, then, then it's all lost. That, that, that's, that's what worries me. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, not, not two or three or four or five or many more things coming together. Um, yes, I, speaking from my limited personal experience, which is mainly in um, Central America and Brazil, um, it's extraordinary how you can get hybrid religions. That the Christianity has given way to um, Voodoo and um, Condomble in Brazil and so on. And in their places of worship, you can see the primitive chanting going on in the church, which often, they often take the seats yeah. out and they just sit on the, on, on the floor mm -hmm. and so on. And um, strangely enough, in my knowledge of southern Mexico, Guatemala, um, the um, Catholic church has more or less accommodated to this. It's the Protestants who fly in from Texas with their, um, with their uh, airmail from God and so on. They're the ones who really try and resist it, and, and, and they want a, um, a monotheistic Christianity. Um, but of course, the um, the hybrid is extremely fascinating with its fetishism and voodooism and strange symbolism and, and music as well. Yeah, yeah that's um, true. Um, could I come come back on um, a further question that? Uh, uh, I thought the story of the rainbow part mm -hmm. of your talk was, was, was quite fascinating. I was curious about the, um, uh, you talked about the, the film Alifu mm -hmm. and um, what the response to that was, was like in, because uh, when we're thinking about Taiwan indigenous people, um, we've got two quite distinct groups, we've got those who live in the city and those that, um, uh, that don't. And, um, do you have any sense how that was received? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, was uh, was it roundly condemned by certain groups in Taiwan? <laughs> Is it something that you you followed? Yes, mm, some some of them. Yeah, yes, okay. yes. And um, I think this is. Um, uh, maybe the this is the issue and recently appear. Mm -hmm. You know, um, indigenous LGBT um, uh, this topic uh, uh, this um, this group is this really this uh, in in a tribe and in the city, but they don't uh, they don't identify to others. Uh, they are LGBT. Because uh, if they do this, like the movie Alif, mm, they, they, they want to, the character want to uh, change their uh, social, like they, uh, their, se their sex, uh, they want to, uh, they want to change, change to the, uh, a, a girl, a boy from a girl. And uh, if the, the movie shows is uh, when he come back to the tribe, the, uh, he feel a lot of conflict from his father, his family, his tribe, and even the, the tradition. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, although it is the same situation in, uh, in uh, the group in Taiwan, LGBT group in Taiwan, but for indigenous people, most most of them have to uh, to um, challenge the 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 Christian mm -hmm. religion, yes, and yeah, maybe this is um big difficult for them, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Any final questions? Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you for your presentation, it's really fascinating, I really like it. Uh, also, your presentation gives me lots of ideas uh, about how I can do my research. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really great, yeah, I like it. Um, I'm interested about you talking about indigenous people and then Christian. And then I'm, I'm not really know the situation in Taiwan. So, these uh, indigenous people became the Christian 
just in the urban area or also in the tribal area? In so, tribal and the urban, all of <laughs> all the area. Uh, so why they became to, you know, become Christians, not the other religions? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of research about it. Because what I think most important reason is indigenous people um, in maybe 90, uh, 50 years before, they are very poor. Because um, in Taiwan society, we treat them differently. So they have a no... Uh, uh, they have a no financial and they have a, a, a they have a good material for them to uh, have a good life. So the, the at first at the beginning the Christian uh, give some money, some food for them. And I, I heard a lot of uh, uh, people say at first they go to the church with the food because um, the church the, they will give the, their food and their money, their clothes, like, uh, like people in Taiwan in 1950. So uh, at first, this is the main reason. And then you will find some uh, pastor use their language, use their mother tongue language to teach them the Bible. And then they the they use the uh, they write the um, uh, their mother language, and uh, uh, to try to close to them. Sometimes even the pastor will uh, build help them to uh, to reconstruct their tradition, like language, like house, like some culture. So, uh. If we say the uh, Christian is bad, <laughs> I think this is um, this is um, uh, maybe for LGBT. <laughs> yeah, sometimes they are they are they don't like this this region. But for most of the indigenous people, uh, the Christian help them a lot of things, even though until now. Uh, they, uh, indigenous people admire a lot of uh, pastors and the pastors uh, uh, spend a lot of years to get together with these indigenous people. They build a close relationship with each other. And um, yeah, I think you, you, you remind me um, why indigenous people uh, didn't close to the Buddha or Muslim? <laughs> Why? Yes, maybe uh, this is uh, the this is uh, uh, about uh, the history of the uh, region, uh, especially Christian, uh, into the China and into the Taiwan. This this is about the history about it. Yeah. In 1950, a lot of Christians come to China and come to Taiwan to, uh, to share ideas of God. And they go to the tribe because the, this pastor believe in tribe. They will find really people that God wants to choose. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I, uh, we did have a talk on uh, religious conversion. Uh, in indigenous communities, and I'm trying to kind of rack my brains to kind of go back in time. Uh, Bia, do you remember, does it really get going in the late Qing dynasty for... So, so we, uh, it's quite a historical process, but I, I still I'm not entirely sure, um, uh, because the time period is, is the same. So we have the missionaries coming to Taiwan in uh, the late 19th century, um, and through into the Japanese colonial era. but. Uh, why it's more effective in indigenous communities uh, is still something I need to go back and look at Scott Simon's paper. Did, B, did you want to add something on this? <laughs> because it's quite complex. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you. Thank okay, you. so, uh, oh, yeah, Ivan, you want to come back? Point, um, I just want to say that I find your way of uh, speaking English perfectly normal, so ah, you are normal. easier to understand than that. Ah, great, okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Finish? Okay, so on that nice 
um, compliment, maybe we should um, uh, continue our discussion over some, uh, some wine.